RuneScape 3 is a dauntingly huge game, with one of the largest perceived barriers to entry of any MMO. This was such a problem that Jagex themselves released Fresh Start Worlds, a fresh economy with sped up progression to get players settled as quickly as possible. But were they required? I'm taking on the challenge to see how long it takes to build up a main account without these boosts and with no external help. So welcome everyone to Building a Main. The goals of this series are broken down into two categories, access to content and access to items. To represent access to content, we have the max cape and the quest cape. Between the two of these capes, they represent access to most content in the game. For access to items, we're going to go for a bank value of at least 2 bill. Not an impressive amount by any means, but enough to work towards any goals we might have going forward. The rules for the series are as follows. Any content or system within the game is fair game. They are generally accessible to all players. Treasure Hunter may be engaged with only using keys gained from gameplay, such as daily challenges and oddments. Real money can only be spent on membership. Accepting boosts, donations, or other help outside of scenarios where the game requires you to is disallowed. For instance, if I go to God Wars Dungeon, I have to solo all of the bosses. If I go to Barbarian Assault, I'm allowed to play with other players as is required by the game to have a team of five. And finally, I cannot use any other accounts, including my Iron Man, to aid this account in any way. No trading, no boosting, nothing. With all that covered, let's dive straight in. As we laid out in the intro, we're going to be playing a standard account rather than a Fresh Start Worlds account. So no XP buffs, no drop rate buffs, and we have to contend with RuneScape's rather inflated economy. Yeah, screw it. Okay, that's the name we're going with. I, it has absolutely no relevance to RuneScape whatsoever, but it works and it doesn't look too bad. Okay, experience for RuneScape. Played before, not in a while, played very recently, or I've never played before. So I'm assuming new player will click, I've never played before. This is going to put us on one hell of a path, I imagine. So, let's jump in. This is what the UI starts out looking like. Okay. Okay, so far, this is basically just the original tutorial island, but with the new mining and smithing rework included. And the UI does not behave during this. There's too many different parts of the UI trying to help you, and they don't really all work well together. He doesn't even get you give you any runes, doesn't get you to cast airstrike, nothing. I mean, endgame cutscenes, nice, I guess. Is, is that actually showing me players, or are they... This looks pre-rendered. Those don't look like actual players. I don't know why someone would be... Wait, no, someone is actually wearing a highwayman cape and doing Slayer. Okay, um, yeah, let's actually see where the game takes us. Oh, okay, this is the introductory. This is the introductory path thing. Okay, I believe the path system is disabled. Hopefully it doesn't pop up again later. But I'm not really sure where I'm going to start. I'm going to take the usual approach I did, like kind of a Iron Man style approach, and just start out by knocking, just start out by knocking out a bunch of quests, basically. As for the double XP thing up here, I'm planning to just ignore it. So I believe my first goal is to get down to Lumbridge, because that's where some quests are, or some good starter quests are. We have Dru Druidic Ritual and Death Plateau. This looks like it's been reworked. Okay, I guess we'll start off with this one then. So to Death Plateau. Okay, I'm very quickly realizing I'm just going to need to edit my UI sooner rather than later, so let's get out that, that out of the way now. 
Okay, so we thrown together a really quick and dirty UI. This is definitely not going to be permanent. No idea what this used to look like. I remember having spell books and stuff open at the bottom here. I no idea how I fit that all in before. I will figure it out in the future. <laughs> For now, we at least can continue with our questing. We've completed Death Death's Plateau, which gives us um, which gives us some reward lamps. I don't actually know when I'm going to use these in just yet. That is 84k. I'm I'm partially tempted to use them on Herblor. However, Herblor is a skill that is significantly easier to train, not cheaper, easier to train on a non Iron Man than an Iron Man. So I'm planning to actually use these lamps on agility at the start. Because getting those first few agility levels is going to be greatly beneficial. And it's also the skill that just takes the most time. And time is valuable. Well, time is valuable on all accounts. But time is especially valuable on the main account because time is money. Now, we're going to continue with our questing and go on to Dr Druidic Ritual. Druidic Ritual completed a whole four quest points, bunch of Herblor XP, load of Herblor supplies as well, that's going to be very useful, and more of those treasure hunter keys. So, yeah, I'm not going to dwell on the treasure hunter stuff, I'm just going to... Those are busted. And we'll just keep chucking XP stuff in agility for now. So... Oh, wait, I think I'm actually stuck at... Yeah, I can't actually level it above five until... I probably just wasted a bunch of XP from that. Hmm, whoops. Okay, yeah, I I do need to basically give membership as a next step. Okay, we now have membership all sorted. And I did go for the whole 12-month pr premiere thing because... The uh, discount is substantial, and I do plan to play for many, many months. So, uh, let's get back to questing in Tavoli, and we're going to go to Wolf Whistle. Okay, we're done with Wolf Whistle now. So that's... How do I have seven keys? <laughs> what have I done to earn seven... Well, earn, get, obtain seven keys. So, we got a bunch of gold charms. Got a summoning XP lamp and some keys. I can actually make a summoning tab while I'm here. Chuck my charms in with the dragon stones. Any mats to go in there? Nope. And I guess we'll start up our herblore tab as well. Then I'll have our potions and our herblore supplies. I'm also going to need a food tab, so I'll put that there. I'm I'm kind of just setting this up how I remember having it on my Iron Man, and maybe I'll end up mirroring that a bit. And there was a skilling tab, and I guess these two can go live in there. So obviously this tab doesn't exist on my Iron Man, but the rest are starting to, starting to take shape. Okay, I'm actually going to head to Lumbridge now, which it, I was... Yeah, perfect. Boat to Lumbridge. I want to do some of the quests in Lumbridge, and... Well, yeah, I'm basically just going to take all of these off. So we'll start. go start off with Cook's Assistant and just continue from there. Okay, we're back with a new day. And last night we finished up Cook's Assistant and I just went and took a break. On another front, I have spent the uh, range of last night and this morning thinking about rough goals that I want to achieve. Like, what do I like doing in RuneScape that would be a fun way to make progress on the account? And what I came up with was Slayer and PVM is are like the two main things I really enjoy doing in the game. Slayer has some really good money makers later on, but it's kind of a really grindy lack of reward skill early on. So it's not something I'm going to go for straight away. Plus, it's not 
recommended until you've at least got some combat. However, treating your combat through methods that aren't Slayer while faster means you end up having to just train them more later with Slayer anyway. So that's the plan early on is to basically progress Slayer. Now, this also means more questing, basically, because uh, quests unlock a bunch of zones and you need access to those zones for good Slayer mobs like Mauritania and... I don't know if the Fremenet Caves needs a quest, but there are a bunch of zones you unlock through quests that we're going to want for Slayer. So, continuing on with our journey, I'm going to be doing the Blood Pact to get some starter weapons. We are done with the Blood Pact, which gives us some starter gear and an XP lamp, and also access to Lund Lundbridge Catacombs Dungeon, which I don't know if that's going to become particularly relevant on a main account. It was very, very useful to use the catacombs to farm uh, slayer tasks on my iron map, so maybe it'll be useful. But yeah, so we've got dual wield weapons now, and we're starting to get thresholds added to our bars. I'm, I am not going to spend too much time worrying about uh, action bars right now, because we've got so many abilities to load up and yeah, basically, once we hit a point where we've got enough abilities, I'll just grab a decent revolution bar off the wiki and we'll use that. Later on, doing PVM and stuff, we might need to swap over to manual and everything, but for now, no need to worry about that. Okay, moving on, our next quest is going to be the Restless Ghost, which I believe is just in here. Okay, we're now done with the Restless Ghost, and I say... 1125 pro XP reward, it looks like. Don't know if you can use any of the more advanced training methods for these bones, but you now we'll just take the nine prayer and move on. So Sheep Shearer gives a uh, gives a good bit of starting crafting XP. Uh, okay, 150. It's not a huge amount, but 2k coins. I guess can't complain about that, so we'll go do this too. Okay, so that probably wasn't worth it in the long run because I don't think the black spinning the black wool actually gives you any crafting XP and the 2k gold you get, well, just plain old balls of wool are like 1200 GP anyway. So, yep. Next up, we're going to be moving across to Varrock is the plan. So the goal is to get up to 25 quest points and from 25 quest points, move, uh, use any gold we get, plus the gold from the dice for the 25 quest points. Maybe the mill if we get a fortunate component item. I have no idea if we will. Oh, that's not an agility shortcut anymore. Okay. I actually forgot to activate the Lumbridge Lodestone, I think. I, I did, yep. Okay, we'll have to activate that when we go down there next. So the first quest we're going to be doing here is Demon Slayer. And if I remember rightly, you start this in the church now. I think you started this somewhere else before. It's been so long, I honestly can't remember where. Okay, that's Demon Slayer done. And you get a ton of XP just for killing quest bombs. Well, I say a ton. Not even a thousand, but... You got a surprising amount of levels just for going through and killing the quest mobs there. Okay, we're now done with Shield of Arav, and I've noticed that this recommended box has been ticked on the quest list. So I thought it's, I thought it it had been showing us everything that we were capable of doing, but it's only been showing quests that it recommends that are, you're also meet the requirements for. So when I was looking for something in Balador, being the Knight's Sword? Okay, I'm assuming they've added a requirement to it that, or oh, there's been a requirement that I'm misremembering. I don't actually remember it having. Oh, it now requires the 10 mining. Instead of just being able to take two bars. Okay. We'll do the Dark's quest because that gives you 10 mining, I think. But now we should be able to see... Where is it? 
It's called Gunner's Ground or something. I don't remember it having a single... Re oh, it's level 5 crafting. Okay, some of these ones that I'm remembering not having requirements, the requirement is so low that it makes sense I wouldn't remember it. Okay, so since we're actually in the area anyway, we're going to head over to the G and cash in some of our some of our wares. Okay, we need we need to do the tutorial on the ground change. Why is a bronze dagger like two K? Why does it sell for one K? And I go to the silver hog feathers. Cool. So that puts us up to 668k and I have done basically nothing to actively make money. Unfortunately, most of that is from Treasure Hunter. So in order to get the five crafting for Gunner's Ground, I just made a bunch of leather chaps and a leather body with the plan to sell them, but they didn't really sell. So five crafting done, let's go quest. Okay, that's Gunner's Ground done. That's a lot different than what I remember. I remember it being a lot more Kind of Romeo and Juliet beforehand, but I'm assuming they had to change that. Ernest the Chicken is going to help us towards getting an Ava's Accumulator, which we'll need for range training and will be useful for doing Slayer. So we'll go do this one. It's also four quest points. And we're done with Ernest the Chicken, which is much a much shorter quest than I remember it being. And we get eggs and feathers. So this should be our last two quest points. It's swept away. So one of the plans I'm actually potentially going to go for for making some money is depending on the value of fortunate component items, just doing a ton of easy clues can be a really good way to make some money because they can drop Wait a few. This is a lot shorter of an area than I remember it being. I have no idea where this quest is now. Well, I'm going to go find this quest and get it done. And yeah, to finish the rambling on the easy clues, you can just farm hellhounds for hard clues, convert them down, and yeah, you get fortunate components pretty frequently from easies. So it's one option for making a bunch of money. But yeah, I'm going to find this quest and get it done. Okay, that's swept away done, which brings us up to 25 quest points, and we'll also drink from this. Now, I think this scales with level, so it might have actually just been a good idea to just leave this and come back when something's a higher level to use on. So for now, I'll just use the first one on agility. Okay, so a 25 quest points. We're going to head over to that Draenor village. We're going to have it head over to Varrock and we're going to basically redeem the 25 quest points for a reward. And this reward has the chance to be just a bit of gold or a lot of gold. This will be 150 quest points, I believe, to unlock the full set and vanquish which is an up to tier 75 weapon for all three styles. But first up, we get to roll our dice, which would give us 250k, I believe. And okay, apparently you can't roll it while moving. That was weird. You get 250k and a blue beret, which is 1.4 mil. Yep, that's a fortunate component. So 1.4 mil for our blue beret. So that means all that questing basically earned us about 1.6 mil. And we can check up our blue beret and see what we get. Get over its average price. Okay, so we're at 2.4 mil. Now let's see how much a ring of fortune is. That's a lot of fortune items. A ring of fortune. This is a 1 mil ring with infinite teleports to the G. It doesn't doesn't even didn't even cost us a mil. So this is infinite teleports to the Grand Exchange and to Miscellanea. May have seen may seem like a weird item to buy at this stage. However, getting back here gives us access to that spirit tree all the way in the back, and 
unlocking those spirit trees is what we're going to start with next time. Thank you all for watching the first episode of Building a Main. If you got to this point of the video, I'm assuming you enjoyed it. If so, you know what to do. In order to stick to the rule of no external help, the recording for the series has already been completed, so new episodes will be coming on the regular. Unfortunately, this means any advice given can't really make much impact on my actions in the series, and I can only address it in post-commentary. That said, any advice is still appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.